All right, as Dennis said, uh, thank you for joining us, everyone, on such short notice. I'm going to run you through some uh, details of what happened here in uh, Portland this morning, and then I'll kick it over to um, Interim Chief of Vancouver PD, Troy Price, uh, for some comments on what happened in Vancouver. Uh, but I can tell you this morning uh, at approximately 3 a.m., officers responded to reports of a fire at a ballot box um, right outside the building that we're in right now. Uh, by the time officers arrived, I can tell you that uh, security personnel in the area had already extinguished the fire. Our officers quickly determined that there was an incendiary device uh, that had been attached to the ballot box and that is what ignited this fire. Uh, our explosive uh, disposal unit came out to the scene to clear the device and it has since been taken into our custody. I can share that uh, the incident this morning um, is very similar to two incidents uh, in the Vancouver area. The most recent, just this morning, in fact, about an hour earlier uh, than what happened here in Southeast Portland. With that, I will hand it over to Vancouver PD Interim Chief Troy Price for some comments, and then Assistant Chief Amanda McMillan from PPB. Good morning. Uh, as, as he said, this is our second event in uh, Vancouver of this nature. The first one was back on October the 8th, and uh, we got a call that indicated that one of the ballot boxes was smoking and we found a uh, device there next to the ballot box. Uh, it was collected by the Metro Explosive uh, Disposal Unit and today's incident is very similar. A uh, call in the early morning hours to 911 indicating that uh, there was a smoking, there was smoking and a fire at one of our ballot boxes and again we collected uh, collected it through the Metro Explosive Disposal Unit. Uh, these in incidents are similar in nature. Um, no one was injured in any of these incidents. We're uh, working with our partners across the river here in Portland and uh, sharing information with our federal law enforcement uh, partners in hopes of bringing this to a successful conclusion. Questions? Good afternoon, Assistant Chief Amanda McMillan, Portland Police. Just a couple of quick comments and then we'll take questions at the end. Um, we really just want to acknowledge the heightened emotion around this event as we build up to the election. We're acutely aware uh, going into the election how folks are feeling and then events like this with the damage at the ballot boxes. Just want to emphasize that we're dedicated to work collaboratively with all of our partners here, federal partners, the county, Vancouver PD, and the Sheriff's Office working to resolve these cases. We do have an investigator working the leads in this case. Um, we don't know the motive behind this, these acts. It sounds like a series of three at this point. Um, but we do know that acts like this are targeted and they're intentional. And uh, we're concerned about that intentional act trying to affect the election process. We're dedicated to stopping that kind of behavior and we're working toward that today. Um, finally, I just wanted to end with, it is an active investigation. We're following up on the leads that, that we developed and we have additional information. I think Mike's gonna share with us here later today. Um, there's a limited amount of information that we can share because it's an ongoing investigation. So I just wanna say thank you all for coming out. We really appreciate you being here and uh, sharing what we're doing to resolve this. Thank you guys. Hello everyone, I'm Tim Scott, I'm the Director of Elections for Multnomah County. Um, the details have already been covered. Um, the good news is the fire suppression devices inside the box extinguished um, any fire almost immediately. There were only three ballots that were in the box out of hundreds uh, that had any damage whatsoever and uh, we we're able to clearly read the voters' names on those ballots, so we will be reaching out directly to, to those that were impacted. Um, later today, we will have all the ballots processed that were in that box, except for those three where we'll be, reading, we'll be reaching out to, to those voters. Um, and I wanna make sure that um, voters can be assured that 
if they place their ballot in that box between the hours of 3.30 in the afternoon on Saturday or uh, until about 3 a.m. this morning, that uh, we have a dedicated line set up for anyone in that situation. That's in our press release from earlier this morning. They can call, someone will answer directly, and we can give them exact information about the status of the ballot if they have, if they have concerns. Um, no other ballots in the drop box were, were damaged, and, um, and I just want to reiterate that it's important that anyone who sees any suspicious activity around the ballot drop site, please reach out, call us, let us know. I'm really grateful for the support that we uh, received from the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office, Portland Police, and the Workplace Security Team. Uh, we fortunately had op an officer uh, from Workplace Security in the building last night, so the reaction time was very quick and we were able to limit the damage. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Multnomah County Sheriff's Office Law Enforcement Chief, Kerry Kerr. Uh, the Sheriff's Office is working closely with all our law enforcement partners and the Elections Office to ensure that voters feel safe uh, and feel that they have easy access to all the ballot drop sites. Uh, we want all the community to know that we want to ensure a safe and secure election and it's something that we take very seriously. Voters can trust that we're taking steps to ensure that the ballot boxes are safe. Uh, as planned, we're stepping up our patrols uh, both um, uh, uniformed and non-uniformed uh, around the area of all our ballot boxes within our county. Uh, we want you to know that the elections office is also uh, safer than it's ever been before. Uh, we have uniformed facility security officers here uh, deployed at the elections office to provide a physical safety presence for everybody. Uh, lastly, the community is our force multiplier. I want to remind people, if you see something, make sure that you say something. Um, let us know if it's imminent violence that you call 911. Uh, make sure you document what you saw or experienced and when it happened and where it happened. Uh, if the threat is urgent, not urgent, notify an election official at your polling place. Uh, any form of voter intimidation, disruption, blocking of access, or vandalism at these sites will not be tolerated. We will respond swiftly and they will be investigated to the fullest extent. Uh, I'd like to introduce Multnomah County Chair Jessica Vega Peterson. Good morning everyone. Multnomah County is committed to the fundamental protection of our democracy. Keeping this election free, fair, and safe is a coordinated effort that involves the many leaders here today and many more across every one of our governments and offices. I need you to know that we are working together and we are prepared for this moment. As election day nears and our community continues to vote, there may be moments of uncertainty, heightened emotions, or unusual events like we had this morning. Elections experts, law enforcement, and partners here in Multnomah County are ready to respond as needed. We will continue to be ready for anything that occurs in the next several weeks. I am so grateful for the essential, hardworking people who work to ensure that we have fair, accurate, and transparent elections. Especially in these times where we're seeing events like this morning, along with claims of rigged elections and illegal voters used as scare and avoidance tactics. Tim Scott and his counterparts in law enforcement have decades of experience fine-tuning, scenario planning, and making improvements to our election systems to ensure voter integrity and voter and worker safety. This is absolutely critical in this election and every election. This corrupt, all of the preparation is paying off and will pay off. We have already replaced the damaged ballot box and voting in Multnomah County continues. We will continue to work together to ensure voters are safe when casting ballots, voters are transparently and validly counted, and our workers feel safe and are able to fulfill their roles. Please do not let today's incidents or anything that happens between now and election day to keep
keep you from expressing yourself with your vote. Our democracy, our democracy depends on you, and you can depend on us to keep this process safe and secure. The best thing you can do to support our elections workers is to vote early, so please keep those ballots rolling in. I encourage you to drop off your ballots in any one of our 30 official drop sites, including some of our libraries. If the closest site to you is temporarily closed, you can find the closest ballot box at maltco.us slash drop sites. You can also mail in your ballot and postage is paid. Thank you all for being here and I want to especially thank everyone who's worked for such a quick response to this incident. And I'll pass it over um, for Q&A. And before we have uh, that Q&A, I, I think it's important to reiterate something that was mentioned by every speaker up here, and that is the collaboration that is going into this investigation. Uh, detectives at PPB are working very closely with our partners at Portland Fire and Rescue, Vancouver PD, the Multnomah County Sheriff's Office, Elections, and the FBI, and through that collaboration, and analysis of surveillance footage, we have um, identified a suspect vehicle uh, connected to this, and I will be pushing that uh, photo out via flash news early this afternoon in time for your um, afternoon and evening coverage. Uh, with that, we can open it up to some Q&A. Please understand, though, again, this is an open and ongoing investigation. We don't want to say anything up here that will jeopardize that, but we'll be happy to field some questions. Why are you waiting to push that out? Just because I'm here physically right now. <laughs> and I will get that out as soon as we wrap up here. Um, that vehicle, if, if you'd like to see it, and you guys can zoom in, more than happy to have that. Uh, this is the picture, it appears to be a Volvo. I'll try to keep it real still. This is outside the ballot box, right outside the building we're in right now. And again, this will come out via flash news here within the next few months. Do you think these incidents are connected? We do. We believe the incident here is connected to the two incidents in Vancouver, and that explains the um, collaboration between all the agencies and why everyone's here today. And again, the FBI is also running a separate but parallel investigation as well. What could the suspect be charged with in a case like this? Anticipated that question coming, and I can tell you that the charges, uh, and this is just potential, Possession of a destructive device, manufacturing of a destructive device, unlawful use of a weapon, criminal mischief in the first degree, reckless burning, obstructing governmental or judicial administration, and illegal acts related to voting machines or vote tally systems. I think it's also important to note, uh, I didn't mention it yet, but the Multnomah County District Attorney's Office is involved in this as well, so additional charges uh, could be levied based on what they come up with. Uh, when we locate this individual. Can you, can you explain how the fire suppressant works inside the box, and is that present in all of the ballot boxes? Come over, do you want to come over here? Do you want to come over here so you can see? I'm not a chemist. Do you want to come over here so you can see? <laughs> so I'll just say that, but um, they respond to to heat within, within the ballot box, so um, clearly it got hot enough inside the ballot box for the fire suppressant devices to go off. Um, we use uh, canisters that have um, a powdered fire, fire suppressant, uh, so it limits the damage to ballots. It worked exactly as it was supposed to and coated the entire inside of the box with, uh, with that dry chemical <coughs> suppressant. Okay. And yes, they are in every ballot drop box in Multnomah County. Do you know if they're in other ballot drop boxes in Oregon or the ones in Vancouver? Uh, I cannot speak to Vancouver, but the uh, Vancouver or the Clark County Auditor, Greg Kimsey, is here. Uh, good afternoon. I'm Greg Kimsey, the Clark County Auditor. Uh, the, the question was Are these fire suppression devices installed in ballot drop boxes in Clark County? And the answer is yes. In fact, they were. Uh, uh, updated. New ones were installed. We installed these uh, four years ago. We installed brand new ones here uh, in the past couple months. Did it not work then in this case? Um, it doesn't appear to work very well. <laughs> Do you know exactly how many ballots? I think the last time we heard it was hundreds, but how many were deployed in the next We are still in the process of uh, coming with a closer number. 
certainly was hundreds. Is Question for both of you, what's the plan moving forward to increase security at these boxes? Well, we're going to uh, install, um, try, to, try to obtain uh, fire suppression devices that work better. Um, we are modifying our ballot retrieval schedule and encouraging voters to deposit their ballots before 5.30 in, in the evening. And we are encouraging voters to take advantage of all the options available to them. Uh, the post office, uh, bring, you can bring about to the elections offices directly to us. And again, you can take one of the 23 ballot drop boxes that we have. Uh, and again, we encourage people to do, if they're going to use a ballot drop box, to do that before 5.30 in the evening. Um, Is Marie Cruz Luce and Camp Perez's campaign has asked for uh, law enforcement to be stationed around ballot boxes between now and Election Day in Clark County. Um, I don't know if that's something that anybody up here can comment on whether the agency even has the capacity to do so. so certainly, uh, Vancouver Police recognizes the importance of uh, securing the boxes as, as much as we can while maintaining our ability to respond to calls to 911 throughout the city. What I can tell you is that we have developed a plan um, to ensure that we are keeping an eye on the boxes as much as possible with increased patrols. Uh, if there are um, if there are some additional uh, technical um, uh, methods that we can employ to uh, to keep an eye on the boxes and respond to um, any type of suspicious activity as quickly as possible. Um, again, we recognize how important this is, and we are responding within our capacity. Uh, we, we will burn some overtime uh, to make sure that we have uh, people available to respond should a call. Is this giving you guys an idea of what to expect after the election, since we're already seeing these kind of threats to ballot boxes? From, uh, from the perspective of the Bank of the Police Department, we always are uh, trying to stay ahead of, of any curves that come. So uh, we're not going to call this a trend by any stretch of the imagination, um, and, uh, but we are wary uh, of, of the, how contentious election seasons can be, and so we are going to adjust our, <coughs> our methods to whatever we hear is going on outside. So. Hey, Tim, can, Tim well, I'd like to yeah, can we hear more about what's changing here, Tim, if anything? We learned a lot from the November 2020 election cycle, and I think uh, that that election cycle and what was going on in the world around us during that election really gave us a good starting point to imagine election security for this election. We already have uh, monitoring of our drop sites on a rotating basis. 24 hours a day, starting the day that the ballots went out and the drop sites opened. That is through a partnership with our workplace security program and their, uh, their contractor. Um, as I mentioned, we had someone stationed in our building last night. So we were able to get, um, like they heard the blast. They responded immediately. They had fire suppressant on the box immediately. We are already doing a lot, and we are in conversations with workplace security and the sheriff's office about what else we can do, um, and those plans will be developing over the next 24 hours or so. Have you ever so. seen this before? Uh, have you ever seen this? I can't remember it. Uh, I've been with Multnomah County Elections for 16 years. I've been in elections for 22 years. Um, this is the first time any incident has occurred, as far as I'm aware, at the elections building or in any position I've ever held. Is your recommendation the same? If you're worried about your ballot, drop it off in person at the election boxes? I think we want, to, uh, we want to make sure that voters are confident with whatever choice they make, whether it is with uh, mailing it uh, through our USPS partners, whether that is putting that in their local ballot box, which might be their library, um, or whether it's one of our 24-hour drop sites. Our goal is to make sure people are confident in all of those options. Uh, as was mentioned earlier by the chair, 
uh, the ballot box that is behind you currently is the ballot box that was affected as soon as PPB was done with with their investigation of the site we had that ballot box replaced and back to business as usual there are over a hundred people in this building today processing ballots and moving forward so that we can make sure that democracy is preserved I want every voter to be able to vote and to do that safely There currently are not cameras on every ballot drop site in the county. However, that is the reason that we have uh, the roving security patrols that I mentioned earlier. Yeah, just what a couple more questions. Two more. To change that? Someone was else Sorry, Claire. What are those roving security patrols uh, We're putting, we're, security officials are putting eyes on drop sites multiple times each day uh, on a 24-hour on a schedule. So Tim, Tim referenced a blast. I'd like to hear more about Broken this device. Because like uh, I know you were talking, maybe this is for Mike. Mike, can you offer some details on this device? He's talking about a blast, so it makes it sound like an explosion. Uh, we'd like some clarity. I thought he said, uh, maybe he said blast. I think I heard blast also, but this is an incendiary device. So um, Rick Graves might be better to address <laughs> <laughs> what, what that is. It's not, it, my understanding is that uh, we do not want to call this uh, a bomb. This was not a bomb. This incendiary device, uh, which is used to ignite fires, correct, Rick? And it was attached to the side of the box and ignited a fire. As I understand it, this device was um, something that creates heat, and that heat is transferred through the box, and then the attempt is to burn up all the ballots that are within the box. So it, it may have been perceived as a blast, but that could have also been the sound, the audible sound of the activation of the uh, suppression system that, that would occur. So those will have small explosive charges that will allow the dry powder chemical to completely extinguish anything on the inside if that was occurring. So the heat, I mean, this is just like any fire sprinkler system. It is dependent upon heat. It will be activated at a certain temperature. When that occurs, the dry inert chemicals will be spread throughout, in this case, the box. Um, I will also say that Portland Fire and Rescue, when we respond to these, we have been directed to only utilize dry chemicals and CO2 um, for two reasons. One, we're unsure of if, what the contents of anything on the outside may be, and it may react um, at, aggressively with water. Uh, additionally, we want to do everything we can do to suppress the flames, extinguish the flames, and allow the ballots to be preserved, to be counted, so that that doesn't work into this administrative hassle of anybody having to redo their ballot, et cetera. So was this all made then? That last question. Was I'm, I'm unaware of any sort of device construction. I can't answer that. Can anybody, do we know if it was homemade or like bought, or I don't know about incendiary devices. Is this the same device? Lastly, just to, to wrap this, the, there was enough evidence collected at all three scenes that lead us to believe that all three incidents are connected, and we cannot get into more detail. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Come here. The device was on the outside of the box? Yeah, it's basically this. Okay. Um, oh, I got sorry. one more. Uh, Greg, can I ask you a question? We know that the Department of Homeland Security has been issuing warnings to agencies this summer and fall about potential threats like this? Do you have reason to believe that this can be connected to those warnings about um, political extremists or activity like that? I don't have any information on that other than to say our criminal intelligence unit is monitoring anything and everything related to maybe this, related to any potential civil unrest after the election. And again, we're working with our partners, but that's all we can say about that. Thank Thanks you. again, everybody. Appreciate it.